shit, so fuck, bitch, slut, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Why must you do this? <laughs> Why must they try to uh, mask our creative expression? <laughs> we just had a whole church meeting. And I told you. <laughs> Y'all, the motherfuckers at YouTube said we can't. Oh man. Them mother forkers at YouTube said that we can't <laughs> speak Phil Florin Phil. No, I will find a little beep noise and just censor myself, whatever. You do that. You do I that. Will. Please. How's it going? Hello. Hi, strangers. I am your lovely, divine, beautiful. I've said cocoa butter brown smooth, but I just want to reiterate. Brit. <laughs> Take it away. And I am. I don't even I was gonna say something about being an A cup, but <laughs> Girl, cause she got I'm D. <laughs> she got if this is on video I don't want to put attention on them but you got them flaunt them she got them things stinging today that's crazy because I am a A cup that A cup you got them that A cup sitting up like <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> sitting up there like two kiwis what's like an A cup for fruit <laughs> references <laughs> Them things sitting up like two <laughs> lemons and two oranges. <laughs> oh, man. I don't even know. They look good, girl. Keep it up. Mandarin up oranges. Work. No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. And welcome to yet another strange episode of... It's, it's a, a strange, strange world, world after, after all. all. The podcast where we discuss true crime cases, the supernatural, urban legends, conspiracy theories. We be doing movie reviews sometimes just to spice it up because we love movies and all of the things that keep the world strange. The hmm. uh, this is a mess. Well, but it wouldn't be not that. Nothing without a woman. <laughs> Was that unrecognizable? What does that, that even enough? have to do with anything? <laughs> oh, hey, Happy Women's Herstory Month because oh, it wouldn't be nothing. Then it's <laughs> nothing without a woman. Tap. It's a uh, Women's Herstory Month, y'all. <laughs> oh, well, you just My threw bad. that in there. I was like, what? <laughs> where is she going with this? <laughs> I didn't know how else to introduce Women's History Month. It didn't have to be this long, drawn-out thing. Just, you know, it's Women's History. Yeah, so um, the first episode will not be <laughs> related to, <laughs> to Women's History Month. Um, yeah. yeah. That's on us. Our bad. Yeah. Because I even forgot what the last episode we recorded was oh it was there were women involved it was the black hope curse is that black oh, hope cemetery oh yeah 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 uh -huh. yeah so there were yeah. women involved interesting Inter very interesting go back and listen to that if you haven't and just for the sake of it being women's history month go back and listen to other seasons where we celebrated women's history month favorite women's history month episode of all time not the baying <laughs> What is it, Mary Bell? <laughs> That's the only part I yes. remember. Is it Mary Bell? <laughs> Man, a strange way for school kids to play or something like that. Now I gotta think what other episodes have we done? Because is that one my favorite? It might be. It might. Or was Doris? Uh, how you say her name? Bither. Bither. Was that Women's History? Ooh, girl, when was Doris Bither? Was that like first, second, third? 
Probably first. Oh, no, it was the second one. It was the second one. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, Maribel is Strange Way for Kids to Play. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, Strange Haunting, Doris Bither. I forgot about Doris Bither. That was a good one. Yeah. So, in today's episode, we discuss the murder of Carrie Farver. Um, And apparently, no thanks to D, there is a documentary on Netflix. See, what we not going to do, when I researched this, I did not know there was a documentary out and it had just came out around the time that I was researching it. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. But no, it's the truth. <laughs> that's my story and I'm sticking to it. I was about to get up, pull up the name, but Netflix tried to play me. I thought that I had figured it out, like that I had gotten the into Netflix and not been in the same household <laughs> as the person who's Netflix because they let me play it for a good hour. But then now I'm saying that I'm not in the same household. So it is. <laughs> oh, it is Lover, Stalker, Killer. It was released last month on Netflix, so you can watch it or not. We're about to give you a a short skinny anyway, so you're welcome. In 2012, Dave Krupa moved to Omaha, Nebraska, where he began a new job as the manager of an auto repair shop. He was trying to move on with his life after breaking up with his girlfriend and mother of his two children, Amy Flora. Dave signed up for an online dating site where he met Liz Gollier. It was POF. It was plenty of fish, if anybody's wondering, because I do remember that from the documentary because I started it. Oh, I was about to say, I thought you didn't watch it. I started it. So he met Liz on Plenty of Fish. I don't know if y'all remember that. Were you ever on Plenty of Fish? I wasn't on that thing. No. I was on. I didn't. (laughs) I touched it a little bit. I feel like it was kind of dying down by the time I was really in the dating scene, but I touched it a little bit. But um, that's where he met Liz Golier. The two began dating, but before things could get serious, Dave let Liz know he wasn't looking for a relationship. He was out in them streets. He just left something serious, and he wasn't. That's what he said. He said, I was not looking for no relationship. I was out here trying to, you know, I was in that thing. That's what he said. That's what he said. He said, I was in them things. I wasn't trying to be tied down. (laughs) And Liz was happy with the arrangement. Months later, Dave met Carrie Farver when she walked into his shop. Dave and Carrie went out on a date where they both agreed that they didn't want a relationship. The two went back to his apartment, and as Carrie was leaving, she passed Liz in the hallway. Liz had stopped by unannounced to pick up some of her things. If it were me, I don't show up at my place unannounced because I'm not opening the door. <laughs> Hello. You said you wouldn't even open the door for family. Mm-mm. So Mm-mm. Nobody. No, nobody. Nobody. No, I'll open the door for family, but you got to have a good reason. <laughs> After seeing each other for a few weeks... Carrie asked Dave if she could stay at his place for a few days because she was working on a big project for her job and he lived nearby. On November 13th, 2012, Carrie left for work and made plans to see Dave that evening. A few hours later, she left. She texted Dave saying they should move in together. When he turned her down, she replied with, fine, I hate you. I'm dating someone else. I don't want to see you anymore. Wait, I could have gave it. I could have served it a little better, but that's okay. (laughs) Fine. I hate you. I'm dating someone else. I don't want to see you anymore. Go away. I just said, girl, what? First of all, (laughs) how you going to ask somebody? Like, How you going to just suggest that you move in with somebody via text message? That would have been my kind of like, hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And especially after y'all just talked and y'all both said that y'all didn't want a relationship. So how did it go from that to this? Because they was domesticated for a few days. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. You know, like they were just in the midst of living together. Yeah, and... but still. Still. Yeah, no, it is a quick 180 and 180 or 360. Is it a half turn or a full turn? 
360 is like the full. So 180. That's what I'm looking yeah. for. She did a 180. Okay. She did a 180. <laughs> is what I'm looking for. And then, and then what kind of a response is this to me? Yeah. Cause that's, that's a little bit too intense. Dang. Like, dang. Okay. And then, well, how did he turn her down? Did he... <laughs> Yeah, because that's why I was. I need to see what he said in the doc. Well, I wonder is he in the documentary? Yeah, he is. He is. Um, his uh, uh, I believe his baby's mother is as well. Okay. Still, it it don't matter what he said. That response is still kind of too much. It is too much. It feels curated to me. It's just yes. like mm, okay. <laughs> He was just like, nah, no thank you. No thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I know, and then that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Carrie's mother, Nancy Rainey, got a message from Carrie saying she had moved to Kansas for a new job and would make arrangements to pick up her 15-year-old son. Nancy thought this was strange, but when Carrie missed her half-brother's wedding and her father's funeral, she knew something was wrong. Authorities tried to get in touch with Carrie, but when they received messages asking them to leave her alone, they dropped it. Nancy also told authorities that Carrie had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, so they assumed she stopped taking her medication and left on her own. Which, y'all gotta do better than that. What do you mean? Like, I get it. Like, she's a grown woman and she could leave on her own. But if her family is telling you that this is not like her, then I would trust what the family is saying and at least, you know, try to look into it. Oh, okay. So, yeah, they just assume she left on her own. I misunderstood it. I thought that the family was also on board with her just leaving on her own. And I was like, okay. But it was just the authorities being like... Yeah, that and the fact that she got in touch with authorities too. So when they did get in touch with her, they got like emails. Because I did say that. I just didn't say emails. She asked them to leave them al- to leave her alone. So I get where they were coming from with that. But I don't know. I don't know. It's just... If her family is adamant that something is not right, I mean something's not right yeah and then for you to assume that she's just off of her medication I would think that would be even more reason to look for her I was thinking that not for them for the family yes yeah for them nah Mm -mm. yeah Dave would continue to receive threatening texts and emails from Carrie one message said I hate you so much that I want to drive a knife in your heart. Another one said, I will do what I can to make you suffer. Liz also began receiving messages from Carrie. Someone also broke into her garage and spray painted the words whore from David. Was that in quotations? Whore from David or whore from David. (laughs) I don't know. Oh, I don't know why it's in quotations. No, I think it's just in quotations because that's what she wrote. Whore from David or just whore? Yeah. No, whore from David. Oh. If it literally said whore from David. Hold on. Let me, I'm going to see if I could try to find that picture. Oh, okay. I'm just like, what? Well, that also feels curated because why would... <laughs> Because yeah. I'm trying to make it look like David. Oh my gosh. Who oh, I see. <laughs> I see what you say. To Liz from David with love. <laughs> what? The? This is a, this is the setup. Oh man. Cuz I think that's what it said is whore from David. But could be wrong. Hold on. She spray painted whore from either David or Dave. Okay. Yeah, Yeah. it's just, yeah, nah, I just, okay. (laughs) Or maybe it was (laughs) whore and then 
the little dash and then David. No, I know. That's why I said two. <laughs> That's why I said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> two Liz whore from David. Who, why? Why would I believe if I'm supposed to believe that David did this? Like, you know, if I'm supposed to make somebody believe that David did this, if I'm Carrie and I'm trying to make Liz think that David was the one that did it, why would I do that like that? Yeah, put your you name on it, then she really will think it's from Girl, you. Girl, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe that was her thought process. That's crazy. Yeah. It's just it's a little smelly. It's just a little from the messages to this. It's just a little smelly. Yeah. And then like when I because you already read the rest of the document. Right. So, you know. Yeah. But the journey that I was going on. I was oh. like, Dang. <laughs> well, one of my notes, I was like, she need to chill. Uh, but then now I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I heard about this on TikTok. And then when I was reading all the articles, I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Plot twist. But yeah, maybe that was her thought process. She was like, okay, she really going to think it's from David if I put from. (laughs) I got to make it clear who it's from. Man. Yeah. Amateur. On August 17th, 2013, Liz called Dave in a panic. Over the past few months, the two bonded over the threatening messages they were receiving from Carrie and started dating again. Liz said that her house had been set on fire and her pets, disclaimer, I mean, trigger warning, her pets didn't make it. That part, I was like, once I figured everything out, I was like, you going too far. You took it too. Yeah, that is too far. Yeah. And so her pets didn't make it. That's when Dave got a text message from Carrie's number that read, I am not lying. I set that nasty whore's house on fire. I hope the whore and her kids die in it. That was when I was like, she need to chill. All because he didn't want to live with you after three days because he didn't want to live with you. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. I hate to say this. Do I want to say it? Wait. You already know what I'm about to say. Wait, um, so you remember I said I saw this on TikTok. Mm-hmm. The comments was like, what kind of... <laughs> what kind, what kind of, of... The David got where he got these women acting like this. Cause what kind of Drake is he slaying <laughs> <laughs> to wear? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, I forgot what he looked like too because I saw a picture of him. But I mean... Like yeah. what? No, nah, let me not say that. Let me not say that. He's a, he's a handsome, kind of rugged. Looks like he, you know, motorcycle working in him. He looks like a man's <laughs> man, you know. <laughs> Cause I was like, this, this don't make no sense. No, to be um, doing all this. No, but but if they're saying she suffers from bipolar oh, disorder, yeah, yeah, yeah. then she's just feeling those emotions strongly. Yeah. In February 2015, Dave changed his number and moved to Council Bluffs, Iowa, and he stopped spending time with Liz. Around this time, authorities finally started looking into Carrie's strange disappearance. Detectives had already searched Carrie's abandoned car shortly after her disappearance, but when they checked it again, they found bloodstains beneath the fabric of the passenger seat. My thing is, is she went missing in what, 2012? Yeah, Mm -hmm. 2012. Like, okay, the family's saying, hey, there's something wrong. The authorities are like, well, we got messages from her, so there's nothing wrong. She said that she was going to make arrangements to pick up her son. She never made those arrangements. Why didn't, why wasn't there a follow-up to say, like, not from the family, but you get what I'm saying? Like say, okay, well, no, yeah. we 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 have not heard from her or had the family been receiving messages too. So basically everybody had been getting like either text messages or emails. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, why she didn't come back for her son, I don't know. Did they question it? Is what I'm wondering. I'm sure the family was I'm they, sure the yeah, family that's what I'm that saying. whole time and then, was questioning it. Yeah, but again, it was like every time they would question something, she would come back with a response. Okay. 
They downloaded the contents of Dave's and Liz's phones, and digital forensics found something strange. Liz's phone showed that she had photos of Carrie's car, 20 to 30 fake email accounts, and an app that allowed her to schedule text messages to be sent at a future time. So this lady, because like Dave was saying how he really didn't think anything of it because he was getting the text messages from Carrie while Liz was in the same room with him and she wasn't on her phone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So she was scheduled. What kind of app? I wonder if that type of app still exists. Because what kind of app that? is that? Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Um, Question. Do we know? And I guess you can find that out from the uh, documentary. So I'll also say this. I I will watch a documentary maybe tonight or sometime this week. If there's something that we need to come back and add or clarify, we definitely can do that because we have time. But mm -hmm. what made them like were both Dave and Liz, like people of interest. I wonder like what made them say, OK, we're going to confiscate their phones and look into them. I think so, because, again, I think they kind of just found something fishy because she's been gone this whole time, but nobody is actually physically talking to her, like on the phone okay. or, yeah, so her mom was like really pushing it, and then they okay. were finally like, okay, and then the fact that her car was abandoned, yeah, which should have been the first indicator, but- yeah. Because, yeah, because where, how, how'd you get to where you were going? I mean, you could have flew, you could have, but you know what I mean? Why wouldn't you take yeah. your car if you're just planning to move? Yeah. Yeah, but I, I am going to watch the documentary. Touche. For real this time, because. <laughs> <laughs> For real this time. I was like, we say Yeah, because I'm still shook episode. about the, uh, the devil on trial. Because, yeah, it was some stuff that wasn't. That I had never heard. Liz knew she may be considered a suspect. So she told police that Dave's ex-girlfriend, Amy Flora, had killed Carrie and was the one harassing them. Shortly after this conversation, Liz called 911 from Big Lake Park in Council Bluffs, saying Amy had shot her in the leg. What she didn't know was that Amy had a solid alibi for the time of the shooting so she played her s criminal self like you you i was gonna say you raggedy bitch you burnt your house she down is raggedy. you killed your pets and you shot yourself in the leg man that's crazy you can't say she was committed though she, at least she was committed i guess at mm. When police searched the SD card from Liz's tablet, they found thousands of deleted images, including one of Carrie Farver's decomposing body. Liz had stabbed Carrie to death in her own car on or around November 13th, 2012, and spent three years pretending to be Carrie. She sent 15,000 emails and up to 50,000 text messages posing as Carrie. She even burned down her whole her own house, killed her pets, Lord. and shot herself in the leg. I feel like you Man. remember on Shame <laughs> when he had made that call to uh, it was Kim Wayans, and she was like, oh! or no, it was when Peaches was talking to her, and she was like, oh! 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 <laughs> that's how I feel like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> For three years? Oh, my God. Three years. I can't you even. You burned down your house? Burned down your house, killed your pets, and shot yourself in the leg. Killed her pets. Them animals is in heaven. Oh, my God. I was going to say, like, what in that? Why am I in it? What is going on? <laughs> man. What is going on? All for That's... a man. All for a man. Ain't no way. I mean, I know... People do stupid stuff and people do, but I'm expecting some Risa Tisa type stuff. I'm not expecting this. I need to watch it because I need to see if there's interviews because I'm trying to figure out 
you didn't have kids with him. You guys weren't married. You guys weren't even seeing each other for that long. What? It had to be the D. She was doing all this because she was not finna go to prison. You know what I mean? Like She was like, I'm not finna go to prison. I'm finna do whatever it takes to stay out of prison. You had no business killing this young woman in the first place, Liz. So that day that they ran into each other when uh when Carrie was leaving and she was coming to pick up her stuff, that's the day it happened. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. So you met that woman one time for like a couple seconds and then you like, yeah. I don't I just don't get it. Yeah, I don't either. In 2017, Liz Golier was convicted of first degree murder and second degree arson. <laughs> She was convicted of arson for burning down her own house. (laughs) Uh, I know that that's a thing, but like, you know, like, girl, come on. Yeah. She was ultimately sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, which she deserves. Yes. Yes. Final thoughts. I I don't even know. This, Man. When I saw this, I was like, really? So there's only been a few times where I'm like looking into something and I have to stop because this I originally saw on TikTok before I even researched it. And that's what made me research it because I was like, this is not real. The only yeah. time, yeah, the only other time that really happened was when I was watching Abducted in Plain Sight. And I was like, this is not real. I had to stop like halfway oh, yeah. through yeah. and do my own research. And I was like, wait a minute. That's how I feel about this. Because why would you do that? Why, why would you take it that far for a minute? Well, why would you take that far for anybody, period? But you yeah. just met this man. And y'all agreed yeah. that y'all didn't even want to be in a relationship. Yeah. Or, well, he, I feel like he said it because he said it to her first and she probably just went along with it. I feel like she did. Obviously, she wanted a relationship, but yeah. she just said she didn't so she could keep seeing him. But still. I was going to say she probably had plans to stay, like, stay around and see if yeah. she could change his mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, is this considered a crime of passion? No, I don't think so because. Okay. The, well. The murder, probably, but everything else, no, because it was over the course of three years. Yeah, which? Because, yeah, a crime of passion is one of those things that just happens. Yeah, yeah, that's why I yeah, was like, but, okay. Yeah, the murder, probably, but everything else, you pretending to be her, you burning down your This was like over the course of, you sending text messages and emails for three years. For three, three years. years, this makes this makes me think that maybe this wasn't her first time. It was too well thought out. That's true. To me, in my opinion, I mean, because she sent the text the day like that she did it, and I guess she mm-hmm. could have just been like, "Oh, well, I have to keep this going." Maybe I guess I don't know. It's just so random. Yeah, that is. Well, she's where she belongs. So. So, yes, she is where she belongs in prison for Mm -hmm. ever. (laughs) That is all, folks. Please follow us on Instagram at It's a Strange World Podcast, X at Pod Strange World, and on Facebook and TikTok at It's a Strange World After All. Also, if you are listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and like the show, please go ahead and give us a five-star rating. And if you're feeling extra strange, please, please, please write a positive review. Yes, we would love to hear from you. What did you think of this week's episode? Also, if there's anything else in the world of strange or true crime cases that you would like us to cover, let us know. If you have any personal stories involving true crime or the supernatural, we would love to have you on the show and share them with our listeners. If you have any movie or documentary suggestions of the horror, thriller, slasher, and true crime genre that you would like us to review, 
email your submissions to it's a strange world after all at gmail.com or dm us at any other social media platform d mentioned even if you just want to say hey there we'll be here all women's history month long <laughs> Thank you for tuning into another episode of It's It's a a Strange Strange World World After After All. All. And thank you, as always, for keeping it strange with us. Oh, and if you haven't caught on, we are now officially, all of our episodes are on YouTube. So if you had some little buster friends that was like, I don't have Spotify, I don't have (laughs) Apple, ain't no excuses. We're on YouTube. Everybody's got a YouTube. So, yeah. Please like and subscribe. Please like and, subscribe. and share. And we'll try to all that good stuff. And share all that good stuff. And we'll try to uh, not be busted when we record <laughs> these. Well, I will try to not be as busted. So. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Love y'all. Bye. Bye. Twelve days later, we're back. Um, <laughs> this is still the same episode. It's probably going to be at the end of the episode. So, if you stuck around, we are back to say that we watched the documentary. We followed through with what we said we was going to do. We actually, <laughs> finally, finally, we both and we both did. So, <laughs> small win. Yep. And again, that documentary. What's it called again? lover stalker killer um and we just wanna i guess just do just a little quick um maybe like what we thought if you or like you know if anything changed or just letting you guys know that we watched the doc- documentary and giving our thoughts mm-hmm. um i was gonna say one thing that i <laughs> i was like wait a minute it's like so many coincidences because how um the tech guy when he was looking through trying to find the IP address where all the emails and stuff were coming from. And they traced it to the house of a guy that worked for him. He was like, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, He was like, he works for me. And then, so they interviewed him and he was like, Oh yeah. My on again, off again, girlfriend has been using my uh, internet. And then he was like, (laughs) Uh yeah, she kind of moved in after her house burned down, and I was like, "Dang it, Liz! It's Liz. That's all he had to say." <laughs> Man, just like Twilight Zone, Henry J. Fate. I feel like that was nothing but God. Like, nah, bro, you think? Yeah, you is not about to get away with this. <laughs> Because it was crazy because she was doing it the right way at first because she was using a VPN, and I was mm-hmm. like, I wonder why she stopped. So yeah, I don't. I don't understand that. I mean, not doing it the right way because she shouldn't have did it at all. But you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so when he moved to be closer to his baby mama, what's her name? Amy? Mm Mm-hmm. And when he had started, he got back on the dating profiles and then met met matched with that lady and was supposed to meet her at the diner and then oh, she was like oh my god <laughs> i'm carrie i was like oh no she done made us on the dating profile <laughs> she done made we didn't talk about that right no okay i was like yeah, oh that was funny because i was sitting here working on another episode and when that part came on it was like a jump scare because of the music and i <laughs> jumped so hard <laughs> it was a jump scare for him too poop out the prize <laughs> what <laughs> okay i Liz, was like, like you know what in the world what Liz, the- like what are you doing and then another thing, because I never heard any of the, any audio. So like yeah. when they were talking to her after she burned down her house, I was like, she sounded a little too calm for me. Yeah. Like she was just like, oh, I think um, Amy burned. I'm like, I would be distraught. I just lost my yeah. house. Your pets died. 
Yeah, and your kids were put in danger. I agree, D. I was thinking that too. I don't know. I was thinking I hate to say this, but I don't care. Y'all know. If you know me, you know what I mean by when I say crazy. She sounded a little crazy. She just sounded a yeah. little unhinged because when they were doing well, when she called in the call that she had gotten shot, but when they were doing that first investigation and trying to make her think that they thought that it was that Carrie was still alive, and she was like, "Yeah," ah, or something she did, and I was like, "She's losing her mind." <laughs> she is loose. It did some of those pictures she that they showed of her, which in hindsight it could just be that they were trying to show her like that. But she looked crazy. I was like, "You went on a day with her." And some of the pictures she looked. A little crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was like production. Okay. Yeah. And to take all those pictures, like what is going through your mind? Like you are the one picture they showed of Carrie's foot, I was like Yes. I couldn't even tell that was a foot. He said he identified it from like veins. Yeah, and then he got his little Grey's Anatomy book. Yeah. He was good. He was good for he him. Was, he was yeah. like a pivotal person in there. And the fact that he stopped his treatment to like finish the case. I was like, dang. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you, I'm telling you, that whole case was just divine. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was just everybody yeah. involved were like, no, we're going to figure this out because there's something not right. And we will do whatever yeah. it takes, which is how it should always be. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because at first I was like, I know we, well, I know I said something about it. I don't know if you did, but how they basically just dismissed it at first because they were like, oh, you know, she's bipolar. She probably just left on her own. But yeah, I think it was a thing where it was like they were basically trying to, this is just my opinion, but like trying to basically let it unfold. Like it was always in the back of their mind, like they never really stopped working on it but i mean it was oh. nothing they could pretty much do at the time right i saw so, what you yeah. said there wasn't because she was an adult and then it came up that she was mm-hmm. bipolar and then she was in communication in quotations yeah. with them oh i didn't know that um it was dave's gun that she used oh yeah i didn't know that either his gun yeah, yeah. And shot herself yeah yeah, and then yeah, that nine one one call. I was like, "Girl, I'm I- I'm gonna I'm gonna try to see if it's on maybe YouTube or something, and see if I could use it." Cause yeah, that nine one one call. What? I'm in the park, ma'am. Oh, I'm in one of the parking lots on the um left hand side. I have a little red Toyota, and I'm playing next to it. Okay, is the assailant still nearby? I don't think so. I took off running. Okay. How many people were there? Oh, I, I don't know. I only heard one. Do you know if it was male or female? It was female. Is there more than one wound? Um, I think it was one. They shot off a couple of shots. They only hit me with one, I think. <laughs> oh, my, my feet are like a soap of blood. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. After she healed from her shot. When I said she, she was basically, yeah. Crazy. And she was basically, well, I wouldn't put it past Amy or something. I was like, she just, <laughs> she said something like that. I was like. She did. She didn't even sound convincing. Mm-mm. Then kept being like, are y'all going to look into her? No, but we looking into you. <laughs> <laughs> You're the suspect here. <laughs> Child. This could have come up in the documentary. Did they find her body? I don't remember. Oh, D. No, seeing I don't anything think anything that, about that. Yeah. I don't think that they did cuz remember they were saying that they thought that it was well that it was going to be really difficult to win the case, which was why they wanted to try to find as much evidence as they mm-hmm. could before taking it to court. Yeah. So no, I don't Yeah, cuz I think, you know, the pictures to me were enough. Yes. But yeah, I was like, I don't remember anything about them finding her body. Oh, and then to clarify, no, we were right. Uh, Her body has never been found. So, okay. Yeah. So then I wonder what did she do with her body? I, I don't know. I don't know. As long as, you know, justice has been served, 
Mm. Maybe her family, you know, like maybe her family yeah. was just like, we just wanted to figure out what happened. It's fine. Oh, and I thought that it was, again, because, you know, I'm on my spiritual journey. I thought that it was interesting that her mom was like, no, I had that dream. Like, because her, mm-hmm. her dad, her half dad had passed away. I had that dream and him saying she's with me. And she was like, I just knew. I just knew this whole time that she was dead. And I was just like, man. Yeah, that stuff like that. Oh, man. And then what was the the episode we did where the mom was saying that she the daughter came to her in a dream? Oh, and that's baby. how and they took it to trial. And that's how oh, they indeed. Greenbrier ghost. Is it that? Yeah, because you kept making okay. fun of the name because it was like it was like a weird name. The guy always, was like Erasmus oh, or something. Like, yeah, yeah, Erasmus. <laughs> yeah, because it's an <laughs> ugly name, Erasmus. <laughs> but yeah, she was saying her daughter came to her in a dream and that's how they solved that case. And that was shout out to ourselves it's a strange witness testimony the Greenbrier ghost that was also a women's history episode so oh mm-hmm. <laughs> i did not know that mm-hmm. i forgot about that from season two go watch that documentary hopefully in editing the magic of editing this won't be like weird like you know what i mean hopefully it'll flow yeah. it should flow we didn't we hadn't yeah. watched it the day before we slept we watched it and here we are so. <laughs> 